afternoon. I'm Abigail Mankey, and you are listening to Interviews, the show about everyday people with extraordinary stories. We are on the web at interviewslive.com and on Facebook. My guest today is Tish Mata. Tish has bipolar disorder. She made her first suicide attempt at age nine. It was at that time that she also began using drugs and alcohol. She's been in and out of mental hospitals for depression and struggled with addictions to drugs, alcohol, sex, and food. In 2009, she discovered Recovery Inc., an organization helping people with mental illness through cognitive behavioral techniques. It's made a huge impact on her. For example, she is down from a high of 27 medications to just one. Tish, welcome to interviews. Hi, thank you. Tish, you started doing drugs and alcohol at age nine and also attempted suicide then. What was your childhood like that you would go down a path like that so young? Well, it was during the Vietnam era that my parents got married and had me, and they became a casualty of the war and transferred that war to the family. I was, um, I had trouble being in one family and knowing I had another, I guess would be the best way to put it. And um, I just, I couldn't accept when my mother remarried my second dad I ended up with the most wonderful relationship, but while I was a kid, I couldn't accept that relationship. And having, struggling with mental illness from a very young age and having precocious puberty, I just couldn't, my mind couldn't keep up with everything that was going on around me. You tried to kill yourself by jumping off the roof. You know, it's hard to imagine a child being that hopeless how how did you get the idea? And, you know, you just described some of, of what was the background, but, but how could you have been that hopeless that young? Well, I don't know the emotional answer to that, but I can tell you that mental illness is most often chemically based. And... One thing that was going on with me is I started my cycles at age nine. What does that mean? I started menstruating at age nine. Oh. And. Wow. That is young. At age nine, I looked like I was about 14 or 15. Really? And I couldn't handle all of the attention that brought because I was a very, um, I didn't have real good people skills. So I was very solitary so to speak. I just had maybe one friend in my life at a time because I had a lot of secrets and things like that. What kind of secrets? Well, um, the drinking, the drugs, um, once you start doing that, especially at a young age, um, when you're the only one that you know that does that kind of stuff, it, it, at least back then, it put me in kind of a a bad situation as far as friends go and and things like that. So I decided to keep it a secret, and I hid it from everyone. Wow. Tish, how did your parents react when you jumped off the roof? They didn't know. They didn't know? (laughs) I've never told them. Oh, you're kidding. So you didn't get hurt then? I got hurt, but like many other things, like sticking needles in my wrists and, and all kinds of other things that I used to do, I just hid it, hid it from them. And then when I became an adult and came into recovery, I realized that my parents did the best thing that they could do for me at the time with the knowledge that they had. And I, I felt no desire to bring any more pain to them because the revelation of having an addicted adult child is hard enough. Wow. Very interesting. So you've really kept that to yourself or sort of taken ownership of it, I guess. Yeah. You know, I made the choices that I made. My parents didn't make those choices for me. Although at age nine, yes, it's true you made those choices, but it would be difficult to expect a nine-year-old to know how to behave in a, in a healthy way when things are going wrong. Yes, absolutely. But You know, like I said, my parents did the best that they could with what they had at the time. You know, recovery wasn't open 
back in the 70s like it is now. And especially having a child with an addiction or mental illness wasn't ever discussed back then. So, so you, you have, have had Tish, many, many addictions, addictions, drugs, drugs alcohol, alcohol, sex, food. Describe, describe your addiction, your addiction to, each. to each. Well, for me, addiction has always taken the pattern of whatever will get me out of feeling what I'm feeling and whatever is convenient. And, and by that, I mean... I started out with alcohol because it was convenient. And when I got caught with alcohol and it was became inconvenient, then I switched to gasoline. And gasoline? Prescri- yeah. I huffed gasoline for quite a while. Oh, and my goodness. Inhalants. Um, then I started doing prescription drugs. You know, whatever was convenient and easy to get at the time. And so it's just been a it's been an ongoing battle from one to the other. So for me... When I started working recovery, I didn't. I knew that I couldn't just work on alcohol or on drugs. I had to work on the underlying addiction. Period. That that spirit of addiction that has always hovered around me. Tissue or bipolar, going back to childhood. Explain how the bipolar and the addictions are connected. So, do the addictions? lead to the mental illness, or does the bipolar disorder lead you to the addictions, or is it some of both? How does um, it- I believe it's a little bit of both. Doctors believe that bipolar disorder is organic, that it's something that can be diagnosed and seen and, and treated. Same thing with addiction. They know that they're interconnected because when someone is in a depressive mode, of bipolar, they tend to self-medicate with drugs, alcohol, and other things to try to lift their mood. At the same time, when they swing over to the manic state, they do the same thing because they're having fun and they want to enjoy that fun more. And so these were all kind of typical of my pattern as well. There, I didn't receive the diagnosis of bipolar until I was in my 30s, and so I never had adequate um, drug therapy or anything like that to treat it. But looking back, you're aware that it is something you had since you were quite young? Yeah, yeah. I can look back and I can see the pattern clearly in my life. Interesting. You know, I've interviewed several people on interviews with bipolar disorder, and their stories are all quite distinct. So how does your bipolar manifest? Well... For me, the pattern has been that I would usually have a period of time where everything is going well. I'm high fu- I was high functioning. I was um, just in general doing good, and then I would that would just kind of ramp up and ramp up and ramp up, and and then I would be in a state of. Um, extremely high functioning. For example, when we were trying to launch our Celebrate Recovery Ministry, I didn't sleep for weeks because I was spending so much time working on that. But I didn't recognize either that I was manic and no one else around me recognized it because I was so high functioning. Then I would the typical pattern would be after a long manic episode, I would slide into a severe suicidal depression. You know, it's 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 like like the devil had me on a on a roller coaster or something. 